I recently picked up this Royal Typewriter, and it's really grown on me. Of course, the IBM Selectric is still superior in the wonderful machine to type with, but I do like how this one looks, although that harsh angle on that keyboard, that is difficult to get used to. I'm used to this one because, well, I'm used to keyboards on computers, and this, this is more like a, a computer terminal at the very least. So I can understand this one, and the keys are laid out very similar, but this, there's a very harsh angle on that, and it's, it's hard to get used to that. But I do like how it looks, and it has a really nice style to it. Well, it looks like it's from about 1954 or so, judging by the, what the internet says. Although I haven't actually seen a date code on it yet, but whatever. So, I bought it for $15 at a thrift store, and they say for parts, because it needed lubrication. They didn't realize it needed lubrication, though. So, I got it for a cheaper price, even though I got a better price than my Selectric, which is superior, but that's... It, it's a piece of history. Actually, I guess these are both pretty reliable pieces, so I may have actually gotten a nice selection of the most reliable mechanical and the most reliable Selectric, you know what I mean? Well, I took some sewing machine oil, and I put it inside here, and I ran a little bit. I also tipped it upside down and put, put it pretty much everywhere I saw something move that was a little bit hard to move. I then went ahead and Oh, I'd say I typed about six pages worth of stuff, just random thoughts and whatnot, and it really, really helped with cleaning it out. Because see, at first it had it had a lot of issues where it would sometimes it would skip two spaces whenever I type, or it would do a double, or it wouldn't do it. There was a lot of odd issues, but putting some sewing machine lubricant in there and then typing a bunch that really helped a lot. Now, never ever use WD-40. Because W40 is not a lubricant, but it seems for some stupid reason people are killing their typewriters with W40. It kills your typewriters. Don't ever do that. Well, there is one issue though. The ribbon on this typewriter is pretty much dead. And I don't mean that it needs more ink. I mean, it has holes in it. So, I went on eBay and I got another ribbon for $4. I'm going to unwind it off of this and wind it onto this spool. So I'm going to take this nail, and I'm going to stick it through here, so this can spin freely. Then I'm going to set it in this random vise that I have, and that should do a pretty good job of keeping it like that. So now, that is a loose spool. Then, let's... Yeah, let's see if we can undo this. Yep, we can. Nice. So now, we need to undo this, and... Oh, wow, that's actually really nice. I like that. So it looks like this actually fits under the spike right here, and it can wrap around. But then you can actually quickly pull it off, and yeah, that's actually really nice. I like that. Oh, yeah, and so this is, must be the, the automatic switching mechanism. So whenever it empties, this goes down, and then it knows to switch speeds to start winding this one back up again to always keep the ribbon moving. The end of this doesn't seem particularly useful, so I'm just going to hack that off. And there we go. And that one... Ooh, this one has a hook also, so I'm just going to cheat and stick a hole in that and call it a day. if it's working or not. Yeah, that's not exactly working. Oh yeah, that is working. Huh, it is. Well, 
Let's test it out. Oh, I got ink all over my hands. And it's over the page now. Oh, well, whatever. So, we have... Red. Black. I messed up the A, but that worked fine, yes. Red, black, red, that. Who there said that? Ah, I always do that. <laughs> Whatever. This is a pretty nice typewriter whenever I get it working, because I couldn't actually get it to type that much, so this is kind of cool. I need to work on how much I, like, press on each letter, because sometimes it doesn't detect it, because I'm, I'm still used to computer typing to some extent. So I think we should do a close-up look at this. So here we have the chrome arm, which is actually kind of nice, and they also get a setting for how many lines you want it to push up. So right now it's on set setting 1, so whenever you push this forward like that, it moves it up one line. Go to 2, you can it'll go 1, 2. Go to 3, and you go 1, 2, 3. So you can actually go 3 at a time, which is pretty nice. I like to keep it at set at 1, though. Now, you also have this, which is the carriage light. It, 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 un it, it disconnects it, so you can move it to anywhere you want. Well, almost anywhere you want, because this has the magic margin. Magic margin sets the ending right here, so I can't access the end of that unless I hold this down, pull this. Now I set the end of that. That also sets where the bell goes off, too. So this is for wider paper. I could also do this for like business cards or whatever and set it right here, so... Hmm. There we go. Huh? So maybe that's the lowest it can go. That's interesting. Oh, it go. It can only go to the center. So if I wanted to do that, I see. I'd have to do this side. So then, can't go much further. Can't go much further. Let's see if I can go any tighter. Hmm. Looks like that's about it. But it's still pretty cool. It's nice to be able to set your width. So you can actually go all the way back and forth. I think I'd like to set this one to... Keep it right there. And then go this one. All right there. I'm understanding this correctly. Yeah, I'll figure it out if I need to. I think I have a pretty good understanding of it, though. I think I have a usable understanding of that is. I can, I can fumble my way around because that's why, that's what I've done so far. Okay, so this undoes. Uh, that. So I guess you could do thicker paper with that if you need. Because that seems to affect a roller that's back there, that little roller. So it's kind of neat. If we move this all the way over, you can see it looks like that is what it connects to, and that's actually what it goes back and forth maybe? I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. It's an interesting mechanism. And of course, we have all those mechanisms back there. We have a high, low. Not exactly sure which one is that t that's t tightening, but or tensing, I guess. I don't know. It's really cool. And of course, we have different 
colors we can do. We can have it to where it goes white like that. I mean, it doesn't type anything. Yeah, it just has regular ink on the... Huh? Yeah, there's just some ink on the actual key itself. Then we can go to black. And then that will move it up just enough to where the key will hit that black line on the key, on, on the, the ribbon. Yeah, so we can type black as long as you want. I'll go back to white to clean that out. And red, you can do red because now it pops it up just enough for the red to get hit. Whereas with the black, it popped it up halfway for the black to get hit. And with the white, it doesn't pop it up at all. I found that pretty interesting. It looks like you can also set the tab. So like how wide the tabbing is i don't know i don't really use that though it's kind of funny i actually have not looked at the back of it yet <laughs> i keep focusing on the front and trying to repair it it's kind of neat it has a nice little emblem it's mostly worn away but it's not coming off it seems too quickly and i also find it interesting how uniform and kind of just almost boring the bottom is so I've heard that Royal actually was so confident in the durability and reliability of their typewriters that they actually shipped them for a very short time by tossing them out of an airplane. And I think that's actually pretty cool. It's a shame that you couldn't do that now because nothing would withstand, withstand the fall. But yeah, that's pretty neat. I don't think I have much else to really talk about, so I think I'll close out the video by typing a bit. Just about random junk that comes to my mind.